Hi, and welcome to the Reinvented Delaware podcast. This is new, so bear with us because we're working out some technical glitches. But my name is Steve. And I'm Cindy, and our business is named... Reinvented Delaware. Yeah. So this podcast, let's just chat a second about what this podcast is going to be about, and then let's kind of get into the meat of our first episode. I think what we want to do here is share our own experiences in upcycling and repurposing. Is that kind of what you're thinking? Yeah, Mm -hmm. and it's been an amazing journey for both of us in that... um, Cindy now has a YouTube channel. She has her blog. We've had a vendor store. Um, I've had a career. I'm in my second career. And so how we got where we're at is kind of amazing. And we just thought we'd share it with you. Yeah, well, before and before we get into the meat of that, because I definitely want to talk about our history. I think that's going to be really interesting. But another thing that I want to share that we want to share here is some interviews with other people who do some upcycling and repurposing. There is a world of people out that out there that do the kind of thing that we do and that are so inspirational for the kind of projects that we've made over the years. We want to inspire others and I want to hear from other upcyclers and repurposers and people that do a lot of building. So we're going to try to get on some pretty good interviews here. So be on the lookout for that. I think mostly it's going to be you and I. I don't know. It might be a 50-50. You and I and then interviews. Well, we're going to see where it goes. I mm-hmm. think think it's an adventure. And But um, not only do we want to hear from other makers, other people that are doing the same thing, but also if you're just interested, you want to know something, you have a question you'd like to ask, we would, we would more than be more than happy to entertain that as well. Yeah, that's great. So if you're listening on audio um, on any of the podcast players, there's Stitcher, there's Apple, there's uh, Spotify. I don't know all of them, but we're going to have, we're going to have our, our podcast in all those places. We're also going to have it here on YouTube. Now, if you're listening, you'll be able to contact us, like Steve said, through an email. You can contact me at cindy at reinventeddelaware.com. I'm going to leave that email address down in the description so you can just pop over there. And I invite you, if you're on YouTube looking and watching us here, I invite you to go down to the description and see all the goodies that we're going to list. Any resources that we have of our blog, uh, you know, any of the email address, any of that kind of information. I can't sit here and think of all of it right now, but we're going to have that all listed down below in the description. If you're li- if you're listening through the audio version, excuse me there, if you're listening through the audio version of this, I'm going to have that in the show notes and on our website. So you'll be able to see all that information at reinventeddelaware.com. So that's exciting. How about if we start talking about how we got into this? Let's do that. Well, we were married in 1983, wow. um, probably before some of you were born. That's and 40 years. That's been 40 years. Mm-hmm. And quite honestly, we had no money. And so we, uh, when we first got married, my mother passed away shortly afterwards. And we moved in with my father um, for a year just to help him get situated. And after about a year there, we decided to buy a house. And we did. And... We had, again, still very little money, and we had, now we had a mortgage. And so we moved into this house with mostly furniture that was secondhand that mm-hmm. people had given us. Um, oh, I remember that plaid sofa that we got from your dad. Yes. It was brown tweed plaid, and it wasn't the prettiest, but it was really a good furniture set. We used that for years and years, a long, long time. Yeah, and God bless family because we had a lot of family members that um, just had something that either they wanted to get new, so they gave us what was old. And we had to figure out a way to make this as nice as possible, and we had to get creative. And mm-hmm. so that's really at least from my perspective, how we got started. Oh, it was definitely a great thing. One of my sisters bought a new dining room table, so we got our old one, and the seats had to be reupholstered. So that was one of my first experiences with recovering just a chair seat on a dining table. And I can't remember if we... We didn't paint that, but I think we... Fixed up the wood somehow. Yeah, I think we refinished the wood. um, At least the top of it. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess the learning experience there is I remember the cushions. Um, Cindy could refinish, but she had difficulty getting the screws out because they're put in pretty tight. They're done with usually at the factory. And um, so I would take the screws out, take the seat cushions off, and then she would go and and attach the fabric and I would put them back on. And, And so that... 
began our partnership. But I think throughout our marriage, we've done things like that. I've done some of the mm -hmm. harder things um, that require some upper body strength. And she's done the creative things because that's the way her mind works. And it's, it's really been a team effort that has worked wonderfully, especially when we started our business about six years ago, seven years ago. Now I, I'm losing track of time here. It's been about that amount of time. And basically one of my, I had a job change and one of my daughters said, well, mom, just start doing what you and dad have been doing for all of your married life. And Reinvented Delaware was born. And well, I think it's been longer than that though, because oh. you did the, um, you outfitted a restaurant and that's been way over well, six I, years ago. Yeah, but, I really forgot about that. Yeah, I guess we weren't officially in business. Yeah, so we weren't in business, but um, friends, family, different people and would uh, call and they would want something tailored or they would want something made or they would want um, some of Cindy's ideas and mm -hmm. Although it wasn't a business because we very rarely charged for doing that. Um, I think that's where at least we figured out that we were doing it, something that people wanted to see. Yeah, I agree. And I guess when it officially became a business was about six or seven years ago. And that's when we named it. Our One of our daughters named our business or two of our daughters. I can't remember how that came together. Named our business for us. And then we started purchasing things and I applied to be in a vendor spot at a local um, upcycling, uh, thrifted and vintage kind of store. We had our first spot. Okay. It was in the old hardware store of a little town that we lived near. And this hardware store is historic anyway. Tin ceilings. Remember the tin ceilings? Mm -hmm beautiful wood floors that you can just imagine traffic, you know, uh, foot traffic over the years of this hardware store. I mean, the store itself had a lot of history. And this, these two ladies, best friends, they bought this place and they turned it into this little store, this little vintage store. And we rented a booth. The first booth that we had, do you remember the measurements of the... No, the, I know it was small. Okay. Though. It was three foot from the wall, seven foot wide. Now this is small. And then we had the wall space behind it. I thought, oh my gosh, how in the world are we ever going to make enough products, enough items reinvented to fill that space? Even though it was small, it felt overwhelming. And then I was a nervous wreck about paying the rent, remember? Mm -hmm. I thought, how are we going to pay the rent? It was only $50. Why was I so nervous? But I, I guess from the get-go, I wanted this business to be self-contained. I did not want our business to pull financial resources from our personal budget, I wanted it to be self-contained. So I was nervous that anybody would buy anything that we were making and be able to pay the rent. Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember. I remember um, the, mostly I remember moving stuff up and down the stairs. That, oh. I think that I remember that. Yeah, because they went up and turn and turn and up and, oh, that was. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, but that's good uh, for developing upper body strength and cardio. So, But uh, we managed to fill the space. Um, Cindy had signs and she had furniture, things that she had redone. So we were managed to fill it. And much to our surprise, uh, things started selling almost right away. Yeah. Yeah. And that first month, I think we made $150. So we, or maybe it was 200 I made 150 above what I had to pay for the rent. I, it was something like that. I don't remember. But I don't think we ever had to worry about paying rent. No, I don't think we paid rent out yeah. of our budget at all. And that was, and not that that was a terrible thing, but that was something that Cindy had committed herself to. So, the, and she fulfilled that, that um, every month the rent would come out of her earnings at the store. And I think Several times a month, she was low on inventory, and we were carting stuff over and putting it up. And then that also required the time of uh, organizing and just rearranging. And so it was more work than I anticipated when we first started. I thought you just put stuff in a store. And people Same here. It was a lot more than yeah. I had anticipated. But there's whole um, creating the vignettes, you know, putting like products together and just creating a look that when people are browsing through the store, they look at that area and, and want to go and, and see what's in it. And then, you know, obviously that, that leads to sales. So there's a whole marketing aspect that mm -hmm. I wasn't familiar with. 
And I watched that develop as we went through the vendor space. That just makes me think that if you have any questions about running a vendor space, and we were fairly successful, I would say that we were very successful in doing that. If you ever have any questions about how we manage that part of our business, just feel free to shoot me an email at cindy at reinventeddelaware.com. If you're watching on YouTube, make a comment down below and ask the question. And then that could be a whole episode that we could talk about vendor booth management. I mean, because there was, we really learned a lot about running a business and that kind of thing. I, I think it was really successful. Um, from there, we kind of eased into the blog. So I have a blog, reinventeddelaware.com, and we have well over 200 tutorials. Uh, there might even be more, uh, don't quote me on that. But we have all sorts of projects over there. So let me ask you a question. Of the projects that we have blogged about, and you're pretty familiar with my blog. He's my he's my favorite reader. He reads every single blog post that I put out. But out of all the 200, can you just guess which which do you think is your favorite? I have an idea of what my favorite is. I actually have two favorites. So do you want me to go first? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. One of the favorite projects, it's not just one actually, one of the items that we use to repurpose over and over and over again were picket fences. I love the white picket fence. It's got the Gothic kind of design at the top. That is really one of my favorites. And we repurposed those pickets into all sorts of things. We made signs. We made these adorable little farmhouse totes. We made uh, crate boxes just all sorts of things out of these pickets. That's probably my favorite that we've blogged about. What are you? What is your favorite? So I guess to give you some history, my daughter um, moved to Chesapeake City in a very small apartment. It was a house that had been divided up um, into apartments and she wanted a farm table, but it had to be a certain size. And this was right about the time of uh, the real high popularity of uh, Chip and Joanna Gaines, the fixer up. Oh, yeah. And then uh, Joanna had the uh, guy, Clint, Clint Harp, that made tables. So she wanted something along those lines. And I made it. And I had some lumber um, reclaimed. Mm -hmm. And so I made her a table. And then she started to... Uh, well, so actually, she called me one day and she said, I've sold a table. And... I said, what do you mean you sold a table? Well, I put it on Facebook, she said, and I've got people that want a table. Okay, so these are farmhouse dining tables. Yeah, it's uh, rustic yes. wood, and then uh, I would build it, and then Cindy would paint it, and we stained the top, and, and we mm -hmm. made it look very farmhouse. So there's, um, it looks like it's weathered a number of families yeah, using Yeah, all it reclaimed lumber that you've reclaimed yourself. I mean, these tables were amazing. Yeah, we... Um, was fortunate to have a uh, good friend of mine, and they were tearing down a barn and uh, turning their old family farm back into farmland, and he gave me the building. And so we went down and tore it down and kept a lot of the lumber. So I had a lot of the reclaimed uh, wood, and that's essentially what we used. Um, I think she still has the table today. She does. Yeah. But she started selling them, and then Cindy got the idea that, hey, we could do these tables. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't remember specifically which blog post, but I do know um, the... I'll link it down below. And then if you're watching on YouTube, I will link that particular blog post so you can see the exact kind of table that we... You made lots yeah. of those tables and we sold them in our vendor booth and we also sold them through social media and through my daughter's advertising on her on her Facebook page and that kind of thing. So I'll be sure to link that so you can see it. Yeah. So the tables, um, the vendor the person that owned the building or, or at least was our host uh asked for a table for a christmas display and i oh, think that's, that's right. the one that your blog post is about and um uh, yeah it could be there there were a we did a couple of those we tables did several. there yes, and i can't remember many. which was which but at one point the uh vendor the store owner where we had our vendor booth wanted a beautiful christmas display in the front window, which was deep. It was probably yep. five foot deep, the window itself, the display window of this old hardware store. And the table was right up in the window. People loved it. They commented and they would come back to me through, you know, Instagram DM messages and that kind of thing. Oh, I love that table. I want one. We sold a lot. 
What was the biggest table that you ever made? Do you remember that, was that one? That 10 foot, and that was for a client that wanted to use it in an office as a conference table. Oh, yeah, that's right. But and, they uh, had the wood. There was they, history. They had the wood from their grandmother's farm, I think. And um, that required us because my shop is not that big. So we had to, actually had to go out and buy a canopy. <laughs> yeah, a tent and, uh, thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and put it up in the driveway so that I could work outside and make the table. But they had the wood. They had some old barn beams, and then they had the lumber from... Uh, a floor and they wanted the saw marks they wanted some of the character to show so we did mm-hmm. a little process called skip planing and it came out really nice they were very happy with it yeah they it they heavy. loved it it was heavy and when they came to pick it up they had a horse trailer didn't yes they? they had a long trailer so this was a, a farming family obviously so they brought their horse trailer over which was long i don't even know how long it was and the two of them loaded that table up and they scooted out now they took care of their own Chairs or benches? Yes. Yeah, they were going to put chairs around it. So okay. really, the only thing they ordered was the table. But many prior to that, um, I made benches for. So there was a bench to seat down the, the long side of the table, and then people would supply their own chairs. Or um, we would find chairs at auctions or yard sales, and then Cindy would paint them, and they matched the table really nice. And a lot of the tables that we did that way, you would put a farmhouse top is what we were calling it was reclaimed lumber wood tops that Steve would build. We would take tops off of dining room tables that we would find at auction and yard sales and such. We would take the top off and then he would replace it with this farmhouse top and we would use the base of the tables. And that was a really popular look too. People loved that. So that kind of leads me into, um, and by the way, we're looking at notes because we don't want to miss anything that we want to talk about. And we're of a certain age yeah. that we don't remember everything. <laughs> yeah, we do have topics we want to cover. So yeah, we, we do. Make ourselves a little cheat sheet. <laughs> we did. So let's talk about where where we shop. How do we find our the pieces that we want to reinvent? Where do we source? What are our? Let's talk about this shopping and because of course that's fun, the shopping part. <laughs> so um, and we, I think we've done this for our entire marriage was going to thrifting. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm going to say more thrift shops because sometimes the antiques are priced out of our range. So um, going to thrift shops and then we have an auction here in Delaware, not far from our house. Uh, It's called Wilson's Auction. Oh, I'm going to leave the address for that down in the description because if you live in Delaware and you are looking for a great auction, it is, I would have to say, the best. Yeah, actually, people drive up from uh, Maryland's Eastern Shore and even Virginia. They come down from Pennsylvania. Come from Pennsylvania, and uh, it's held on Saturdays, and it is all day. So it starts around 10 in the morning, and it goes till 11, 12 midnight. Mm -hmm. So there's an indoor to outdoor um, portion, but we would go down, and we would kind of scope out some of the furniture. And once you get used to it, you can kind of tell what is going to um, sell at a high price and then what is going to go kind of low because it needs some work you know and um, so we had learned that you know looking at the construction of the furniture because we didn't want to we didn't want and excuse me but we didn't want like Walmart grade furniture um, so we were looking at stuff that back in the day when it was made would have been top of the line mm-hmm. and it had just um, been handed down and somebody just decided to change their style so they took this old furniture to the auction yeah and um but you know dovetail joints the um the what do you pin, call it pin and cove or yeah, nap, pin and cove, nap, the joinery. nap joints yeah. and you know just put together most of it was oak or maple or hardwood and it really just needed some fixing up mm-hmm. yeah um and when he says that about walmart furniture i, I feel like we have really stuck to authentically older pieces, I would even say prior to 1950, because you and I are not really mid-century modern kind of furniture people. We really seem to love the middle 1800s up into 1930s and 40s. Wouldn't you say that most of what we've done has been in that era? And there was a period of time, and uh, my, my mother's family comes from that, that you know, when you bought a piece of furniture, it was for a lifetime. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we didn't change our style so much. Uh, in fact, I'm looking at a library table that my mother mm-hmm. did homework on. And, um, yeah, but that once you got a piece of furniture, you took care of it and you passed it down. So, you know, your kids kept it. 
they might pass it down to their kids. So this is stuff that is really, really well made. And I think a lot of the furniture today is not in that category. It's made to look nice for a while and then mm -hmm. it starts to delaminate. Um, you know, some of the joints start to come apart and then people throw it in the dump. Yeah, I agree. So when we have gone to auctions, and I just remembered, we actually filmed a video at Wilson's auction. I'm going to link that one too. I'll put it down in the show notes. If you're listening, if you're on YouTube, I'll put it down in the description and then you can go and watch that video. That was a lot of fun. And we plan on sharing more of those kind of videos in the future that where we show what it's like to go to an auction, what it's like to put in a bidding number and you know, the ins and outs. All, we've done so much of that that I kind of feel like we're experts. Well, we're, we are. we're exper experienced. Experienced. Yeah. That's so, a humble way of putting it. <laughs> um, but uh, along with the auction, yard sales are also um, mm -hmm. a similar place because, again, people are downsizing. Sometimes they're moving. Sometimes they uh, just want to update their style and they bring their whole house out in the yard. And you can get some really good bargains and at yard sales. And again, it depends on what you're looking for. So if you don't mind doing the work, and Cindy's always had that vision, she'll see a piece of furniture and say, oh, I'm gonna do this and this and this. And honestly, I don't picture it when she tells me, but it always comes out really nice. So mm -hmm. I, I uh, often joke that I am management and she is labor. <laughs> Or I'm sorry, vice versa. I am labor oh. and she is management <laughs> um, because she does have the vision and she has that creative flair that I don't have. Uh, so she'll tell me I need this fixed or I need a shelf put in here or I want to do this, I want to add this. And so I end up doing that part of the construction and then she ends up styling it and painting it, picking colors and things like that. And I think you do a really good job at that. Well, thanks for saying that. And honestly, you do a really good job of helping me to take that vision to fruition because I've come up with this idea of whatever I've said. Even the first time that I talked about the farmhouse table tops on an old dining room table, he's like, you want to take the wood off of that table? I said, I guarantee it's going to look amazing. So it was hard to take off some of those solid wood tops that were a lot of them in bad condition and then put that farmhouse top on it. But once he saw, oh yeah, this does look really good. This rustic kind of tabletop with these beautiful Queen Anne legs on the base of the table. Then he realized how pretty it was. But you were really good at, you're really, I'm really good at coming up with the idea, but I can't implement the idea. I can explain it to you and you go, okay, this is how we have to do it. And then it just, it's a perfect marriage. Yeah, and that and that's a process because I uh, think back to some of my early woodworking adventures. And again, we had very little money, so you were picking up scrap wood, um, you know, the half a sheet of plywood or a quarter sheet of plywood, and they come from four different sources. You know, my dad might have some, um, and then we would put stuff together. And quite honestly, thinking back, it was atrocious. <laughs> but uh, as we have grown, and I've, I've had that interest in woodworking since I was a kid because my grandfather used to build stuff. And I remember watching him in his shop doing that. And so as we have grown, I've been able to purchase some tools. And I think just about everything that is in my shop was purchased used. Oh, um, like your um, vintage lathe. I have a lathe. So before we get down that path, because we're going to talk about that. Um, one of the things that we used to sell were these hand-turned can pillar candle holders. I'll try to put a picture here. If you're watching on YouTube, I'm going to try to add a little picture of what they look like. But you used your vintage lathe as a way of turning these. And to me, that added another layer of interest to these candle holders because I could advertise them. They're not, they're not run-of-the-mill uh, candle holders for sure. And the fact that they were made on a vintage lathe tool in yeah, your workshop adds to it. it added to the to that so we're going to talk about those kind of projects as we progress through this podcast but there's one last question that i want to ask you since we were just talking about where we like to go shopping for our items we go to auctions we go to thrift stores we go to vintage stores but we're kind of careful we go to yard sales so let me ask you if you go into a thrift store where's the first department that you head to Toy. i know where i get toys where, Really? Yes. Why? What's that all about? Um, I uh, When I was a kid, I had all the um, latest and greatest Batman stuff. 
and I'm still a huge Batman fan, hence yeah. the the cup. Oh yeah. You can see it. Um, the I've actually got at least one of my grandsons uh, following Batman now, but um, I always go and look. I'd love to see the toys, the things that I used to have when I was a kid, mm-hmm. and now because we have grandchildren. I can buy some of those toys and I don't have to justify it. But I always go to the toys. I just like vintage toys. And then um, that's quickly followed by tools. So if I can find some old vintage um, tools, hand planes, things like that, I oftentimes will go through them. I've purchased several and restored them uh, because a lot of times people don't realize that some of these planes are really, really high quality. Mm -hmm. So. And you have quite a pretty display uh, or a collection of those hand planes, hand planes, and we have displayed them on our fireplace mantle with greenery and such. So it, at some point, we'll talk about that more. Yep. I but that's a... really interesting. So you go for the toys and the tools. That's That seems good. So we kind of branch off and go different ways because I go to furniture. I, I have a thing for washstands. I really love old vintage washstands. They're so pretty. They're so easy to make over. And a lot of times people just don't want them anymore. We ha- we have used wash stands that I've made over for uh, our nightstands right now on either side of our bed. They are wash stands. I've used them. You have one between the two chairs in the living room mm-hmm. where you like to do your drawing and stuff. So he can use it to store. Um, he does some hand carving and there's tools for that. He can store the hand carving tools in there. You do a lot of uh, drawings. You can store your drawing supplies in there. I mean, it's really a great piece of furniture. So I would say that when we go to a thrift store or an auction or a yard sale, I'm always looking for furniture and mostly I'm looking for those wash stands. I could have three wash stands in every room and be a happy person. There's just, that's a weird, but anyway. They they do create a lot of storage. And I know while you go for the look, I oftentimes think of the history. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I really like to think of, you know, just, uh, you know, what has that stand been through? And, you know, the if it could talk, the conversations that took place around that wash stand or near that wash stand, you know, uh, we've been through two world wars, a Korean War, the Vietnam War. And you just think of the families that, that were worried about family members and that wash stand was an integral part. Obviously, we'll never know those stories, but the history is always. But it's there. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Like yeah, I agree. Well, this has been a really good episode, a really good way to introduce introduce who we are, kind of what our podcast is going to be about. And as we were sitting here and discussing, I've gotten some more ideas for more episodes. How about you? Yep, I've got some ideas. And so um, you're going to see us quite regularly. And we're hoping weekly. Yeah we're, yeah, we're really trying to get this up and running and then you know manage our schedules and Um, family, things like that. But we really want to make this a regular thing. We hope you will join us. Um, If you like it, we ask you to to subscribe. Read Cindy's blog. Subscribe there as well. But um, more importantly, give us some questions, Hmm. some comments, uh, because we want to tailor this to the things that interest our audience. And so let us know what you'd like us to talk about or what you something you'd like to know. Yeah, you can let us know what you want us to talk about through an email at cindy at reinventeddelaware.com. That will be down in the description or in the show notes if you're listening. You can follow our show on any of the podcast players, Stitcher, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel and we are going to have this, you can see that now, on YouTube so that you can watch us or you can just listen to us as you get your day going. And thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time.